Let's uh, say a prayer. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Lord God Almighty, uh, we gather together in your name. We rejoice in your name. We praise your name. We are so honored to be able to call upon you as Father. And uh, we are grateful for uh, the intimacy and for the fatherly care that become ever more available to us even through your name. We thank you for the ways in which you take care of us, the ways in which you are present to us, the ways in which you heal us and strengthen us. And so uh, this day may we give ever greater glory to your holy name. And we ask this prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. So, uh, Small boy is sent to bed by his dad, and five minutes later he hears, Dad, what? I'm thirsty. Can you bring me a drink of water? No, you had your chance. The lights are out. Go to bed. Five minutes later, Dad, what? I'm thirsty. Can I have a drink of water? I told you no. If you ask again... I'm going to have to spank you. Five minutes later, Dad, what? When you come in to spank me, can you bring a glass of water? (laughs) I kind of uh, had to use that one today because uh, the topic for our reflection today is uh, becoming like children. And so... Uh, The famous passage, uh, at least famous for us uh, as youth apostles, from Matthew 18, uh, 1 to 4, goes, "Um, At that time, the disciples approached Jesus and said, Who is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? He called a child over and placed it in their midst and said, Amen, I say to you, unless you turn and become like children, you will not enter the kingdom of heaven. Whoever humbles himself like this child is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. So that's Matthew 18. You can find something similar in Luke 10. And so what does it um, mean to become like children? Um, Maybe another way of saying that is what are the traits of children that Jesus wants us to imitate? So... That's the subject for my reflection, but I do want to start with one, I think, helpful, perhaps quick distinction, and and that is that I think that there's a a distinction, or at least we can make a distinction, between being childlike and childish. And so what I think Jesus is inviting us to is to be childlike, but not childish. And so I would call the childish... Uh, those elements of children that we can be pretty confident that Jesus doesn't want us to imitate, such as the tantrums, uh, the automatic no to any request, uh, the refusing to share their toys with their younger brothers, some of those elements of children that we know, uh, we can be pretty sure Jesus doesn't want us to imitate those. So um, what, uh, what are those elements of children that Jesus would want us to imitate. And certainly the first of those, for me anyway, is uh, a child's trust in their parents, right? And so, um, you know, their willingness to jump on the back of, you know, mom and dad's bike and ride with them around town, even if, if they have no idea whether mom and dad can ride a bike very well, right? Um, the idea of a child sitting at the edge of the pool willing to just jump into the pool because mom and dad are nearby and have their hands out. That, that just kind of blind trust that they're going to take care of me. You know, I think um, even in a somewhat similar vein, uh, kids love it when, when you toss them up in the air, you know. And, and that can be a dangerous moment if mom and dad are not super coordinated, I guess, you know. Um, kids seem to be able, most of the time, uh, when they have a good relationship with their parents, 
they seem to have this profound conviction that someone really big really loves me, they're going to take care of me, and I just don't have to worry. Mom or dad is nearby. Right? And um, I think that uh, that's a beautiful thing, and we need to have that kind of trust. And so just to give a, a real-life example to it uh, uh, in terms of saints, um, I, I marvel at St. John Paul II's life who, you know, lost his mom at a very young age. I think he was like four. Then lost his older brother, his only uh, sibling, when he was around 19, I believe. And then lost his dad while he was in the seminary. And in the midst of all of this going on, you know, the Germans invade and then the Russians take over. You'd think that he would shrivel up and die but he became that much more a man of faith and a man of trust in Almighty God. So, second thought is uh, their resilience and their ability to uh, bounce back. Now, again, a lot of this does depend upon the quality of their family life, but for the most part, it is amazing how quick kids are willing to bounce back from things. Literally, when they fall on the floor and bounce and get back up and keep going, but even really emotionally, I think, again, most of the time, um, kids uh, can bounce back so quickly, and th they can be generally pretty darn quick to forgive and to forget and to put up even with some pretty serious ugliness that goes on in their lives sometimes. They can put up with it. Um, and uh, sometimes we find it hard to let go. We find it hard to move on. And a, a story for me uh, of an adult living this resilience was uh, a coach that I had uh, that I loved a lot when I was in high school. Jake the Snake was my baseball coach at Bishop O'Connell. And uh, due to some circumstances that I didn't understand and um, probably still don't understand, they removed him as the baseball coach at O'Connell and brought in uh, somebody else. Uh, and it was circumstances, again, that I don't understand. And, uh, and, but at the end of this next year, uh, that new coach had to leave for some challenging reasons. And uh, Jake came back the next year and coached and kind of, went on like nothing had happened because he loves baseball and he loves Bishop O'Connell and he loved the people of O'Connell and so he was willing to just move on and come back and, and coach again. Um, and I had great respect for that. A third uh, trait of children is their joyful enthusiasm. Uh, boys willing to just jump into puddles and no matter what they're wearing and just, you know, splash around in the puddles and picking up, you know, daisies and carrying them around and <coughs> offering them to mom. Um, you know, I think uh, the, the joy of collecting fireflies in a jar, they can spend hours doing that on a late summer uh, evening, right? Uh, snowflakes, trying to catch them on your tongue. I think uh, the amount of time and energy that can be spent just with a toy truck or a toy doll, finding a frog in the yard, trying to keep it alive, right? Kids have this, this joyful enthusiasm about the smallest, littlest things sometimes in life, right? And every day is a new day. And, um, you know, and I think that uh, somehow they, they kind of sense this, this goodness of God uh, and, and can see it almost everywhere sometimes, even when we can't. And um, there's, there's something beautiful about that. And so uh, joy, joy uh, being manifest in an adult. 
St. Maximilian Kolbe was a great, great Franciscan saint and just doing some tremendous work for the church. He was, had established a, a kind of community and a, 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 a very strong devotion to the Blessed Mother. And uh, he was in charge of um, a Franciscan community there in, in uh, Poland. And at one point while he was there, I think there were 800 Franciscans in this one monastery. I mean, it was more than one building. Um, he was just doing tremendous work, right? Then went off uh, to do a similar thing in Japan and then came back during World War II and was thrown into prison. And he was the one who substituted himself for the married man who was supposed to be killed because of, um, um, uh, one of the, the prisoners had escaped. And so he offered to take his place. And so they decided to put these people to death by starvation. And while he was in this time with the other prisoners while they were being starved to death he was filled with joy he was leading them in hymns and he, songs and singing the praises of God and as a result they were lasting way longer than they were supposed to and he in particular and so in the end they had to they gave him a lethal injection because he was driving them up the wall because he was lasting so long and so filled with joy Joyful enthusiasm. A fourth element that I'll throw out is uh, an openness to learn. I mean, at certain ages, we get that, why? Why this? Why that? Why this? Why that? Why this? And it can drive parents up the wall, right? Um, and yet, how quick they are to kind of trust the authority of parents when you're giving answers, even if you don't give the right answers, right? <laughs> they, they trust uh, there. Uh, but there's this thirst for knowledge and this thirst for, for, for um, better understanding the world around them, right? Um, a line from Jesus. At that time, Jesus declared, I thank thee, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, that thou hast hidden these things from the wise and understanding and revealed them to babes. I, I believe that God wants to be revealing so much truth to us. And one of the things that I have loved about the church in the past number of years is how many doctors the church has declared of um, saints who were not well educated. And not that I think that's special, but in particular, quite a few women saints who didn't have the privilege of being well-educated, but their faith and their prayer ran so deep that God revealed things to them in their prayer, and when they shared that with the world, they have become saints. And so, you know, Catherine of Siena, Teresa of Avila, and Therese of the Child Jesus are just three examples of that. A fifth uh, uh, element of the lives of a child, that, uh, of children, that I'll, I'll toss out, and my last one, is, uh, is a lack of prejudice. Um, and so I think that most of the time, in a kindergarten class, in a big city, children care less about the color of skin or the religion of their classmates in a class. Most of the time, they could care less. It's just, whether, they care a lot more whether they're willing to share their toy with them than the color of their skin, right? Because I think that kids learn racism from adults. I don't think that's in our normal nature. And so I think that Jesus shocked his audiences with the events and the stories that upheld the dignity of every human being. 
And so the story of the Good Samaritan, Jesus shocked everybody when the Jewish priests and scribes walked by this person and the Samaritan was the one that Jesus made out to be an example. And the story of the woman at the well, who was indeed a Samaritan woman at the well, and how much time Jesus spent with her to heal her. And the story of the Roman centurion, a Roman pagan centurion, and Jesus said, I have not seen this much faith in all of Israel. And the Canaanite woman that Jesus tested, right? He tested her and tested her, and she hung in there, and then he granted her her request, right? So uh, maybe uh, another living example certainly for us would be St. Teresa of Calcutta who was so unbelievably committed to serving the poor regardless of religion, of nationality, of color of skin, or of the cause of their suffering. And so in many places, you know, she set up houses for those who were dying, and here and even in D.C., those who were dying of AIDS. So uh, I would say that in conclusion, uh, Jesus actually states in the passage from Matthew that it is the humility of children that we must imitate. And I think that these elements of trust in God, resilience, joy, openness to the truth, and lack of prejudice are elements of humility. And it is the humility of children in the end that God wants us to imitate. So my challenge to you is pick one of these traits that you think Jesus is asking you to become more like and work on that for the rest of this year. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.